Okay, TJ Dagger here. Okay, in the last uh, video or two, we talked about um, uh, capturing this flag. We had um, infantry coming in, enemy. We had our guys spawning down here, coming up. Things are working not too bad. So what we want to do is, we talked about expanding the map. Okay, so this is quite small. Basically, we want to be able to come up, take this flag here, and then have the map open up and another section out here. So basically we're taking a map that's small and we're going to make it bigger. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do it in F2 mode. So we first want to unload our mission. So here we are into F2 mode. Now we talked about our we'll just make the if we tick that we can see the boxes. So we've got our auto clip which is our default clip and it's very important that we actually have an auto clip um, and that comes into play later and it, it'll become important when we start want to start taking um, a snapshot image for our little mini map later so we're not at that point yet but then we will definitely cover all that stuff so what we do want to do is we do want to extend our auto clip has to include um, has to be big enough to include all our areas that we're going to <coughs> all our our whole area has to fall with that we want as a playable area so not including this but all our playable area ultimately has to be contained within the auto clip and that's that comes into play later on as important but so we'll just expand this out And that'll be fine. Now, I'm also I'm going to make a, um, I'm going to add another clip. I'm going to call it second. And basically, I want it to come out here somewhere too. So this is going to be this second clip I'm making is going to be. The clip that we use in the end, uh, sorry, not in the end, the, the clip that we use to move from this section to the next section. And we'll do that through scripting and stuff. Um, okay. So I'm just going to add some polygons, basically. It's just with the left button held down, dragging it. grids if you think they'll help. Okay, and fill that out. And that's all that's really involved in making your map bigger. So as far as our mission's concerned, the plan is to take the flag here and then have this section open up and then have another flag or two or whatever in there. So um, we'll just save that. So the rest of from here, it's a, it's a case of uh, building up some mission. Ah, uh, sorry, building up some map to. Um, filling out some map and then going back into mission so um, the rest of this video will probably be playing some music as I build a map but uh, just a quick thing I guess is looking at this I guess I'll try and make a river here somewhere with a with a creek and I know we've talked about height tools before but um, that, um, that there's the height map uh, grid you can access the same or similar thing by pressing alt H 
and there's different variations of that I think that one there is the terrain so it brings up several different grid, grids cycling through alt H that's the height that's whatever that is and of course the terrain one okay but if I set this height to negative 50 for argument's sake that a bit bigger and I can make a bit of a creek it flows through here make it a bit deeper than that in parts and I'll probably put in a bridge a bridge here and it's good to have a couple low points too where things can cross this is where uh, we'll bring out a piece of water here in a moment so if I just hold shift I can smooth them up a bit oh, that water if I could still untick that make it a bit deeper there manually a bit deeper through there perhaps Okay, find a bridge. Um, some of the wooden bridges, if you're using a wooden bridge to span a gap in the water, some of them wooden bridges are destructible. You have to sort of make sure that your mission isn't dependent on you getting across a bridge that can be potentially destroyed because otherwise if you can't cross the water without the bridge you can kind of really stuff it up I suppose okay all right here's a good opportunity to really look at something rather than put the bridge in right this second let's look at a water piece um, under landscape water so what do we want we want a river it's pretty big I guess does that look like not big enough here we go right so now the, what's the height of my water here it's at zero I'm going to put it down to negative five uh, where are we negative oh, right, there we go and I should set my water piece up here to be negative five as well let's have a look where that goes so that makes a pretty big creek so it might be an idea to uh, sometimes drop your water height down to sort of something that's going to be reflective of what you want to achieve so I might make this let's try negative 30 and see how that looks and then I'll constrain this I can constrain this to water which it already is so it automatically adjusted so that looks good. Control C and V to copy and paste that. I can hold down S to scale things a little bit bigger rather than put a third piece in. Now, this is where I'm going to use Alt H to bring up those grids. Cycling through. Okay. Now what I might do is just save this. Let's check this. Let's go into uh, terrains. No heights. Okay, what we should be seeing, and perhaps I need to reload the map, let's just try that. So we've saved it, reload it. What 
we should be seeing is water under there. Um, maybe I have to paint it in. Yeah, there we go. Okay, when you're using this is this is a terrain tool. Now terrains, there's a whole bunch of different terrains, and uh, effectively the water one's pretty unique in the way it uh, it handles things. But all the rest are basically things like road and swamp and um, and different variations of ground and. And what they'll do is, like, when you're driving along with the vehicle, if you've got it set to ground as opposed to road, the, it'll affect the way little dust particles come off the ground. It, um, it may affect the speed on some. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it, it it basically affects the um, what sort of tire tracks are left on the ground. Like, for example, if it's if it's um, if it's ice or snow. <coughs> You know, it'll leave a track like snow when a vehicle drives along. If it's grass, it'll leave a track like grass. That sort of thing. So that's on the ground ones. The no pass one, if you don't want um, enemy or player to, to go anywhere. So, for example, if you don't want them to come up the side of a map, say, you can uh, paint it out with the no pass, which puts down these red squares, which um, enemy nor player can actually get across them. So let's don't particularly want that at the moment but so that's what the no pass one but the water one we'll put we'll paint our creek down and it won't actually paint uh, it won't change the squares where the ground is because or well, anything under the under the water height so anything under negative or above negative 30 it won't actually affect it so only if it's pretty intuitive this one how it will only affect uh, anything below your set water height. So I'm making all that water terrain. And what that does is that, that uh, tells a unit that comes along, long, it suddenly knows that's water. This is how it tells water from ground. If I didn't have that, units would basically come down and they just walk underwater and they'd keep going through. So that's what painting it with the water terrain brush does. Okay. Now you'll notice, or we'll move one of these out of the way for now, just so we can look at this. So, and I can get back to that with Alt H. Now you see we've got light blue here and dark blue squares. Now, the light blue is where is shallow water, and the dark blue is deeper water. Now, if I bring the height tool here, and I can it'll intuitively you can see so this is how you can make sure that you've got um, access to get across creeks and stuff with shallow water you can tell by using this tool alt h to cycle through the different grid styles find the one for terrains um, and you can use because unless you're on without using the alt h um, it will only sharp when you've got terrains selected so there's with none terrains automatically shows it if I go to here I can't see it so I've got to use alt H to get that also while we're here we'll take a quick look at um, how different units handle crossing the deep water um, and what sort of restrictions are going on there so what we'll do is we'll just grab a unit um, anyone will do now, when I've got this guy selected, if you look in his uh, properties, he's under the AI control. Um, now, if I go to F1 What's mode that? and select that guy and try and use him and get him to cross, he won't. Yeah, he won't go across the deep water. Okay, so we'll just run him around here. Yeah, boy. So he will cross the shallow water which, if we put this back in place, we can... So, and you can see the little particle effect. So he's in water, so... That's that guy. So if we want him to go into... Uh, in a mission, you might have your, your mission set up, so you want your player to cross the water. Now, the only way they'll cross the water is if they're actually under a user control. And if you think back to some of the other videos we've done, we've um, 
we've had our units and um, just put him on a player so I can select him properly. Alright. So now because he's because he's classified under user control, he will actually swim through the water. And the only way to get him to do that is is by having them under user control. That's why when we make a mission, um, we have that actor state where we select them as a user, or I mean you can assign them in their properties straight up if you know they're definitely only going to be used by the player. Um, but AI as it stands, they won't swim across uh, creeks. They have to be assigned to a user control to swim through the deep water. So that's a good one to remember. Okay, I think that's going to wrap this video up, and the next one will be basically just a bit of demonstration, map building, filling out this area, seeing what we come up with. Cheers guys.